this is Al Weissman and a nutshell, and today we're spending a little bit of time visiting with Anthony Houston of Pots and Pans. Anthony, how you doing? Doing great. Good. Now, I, I'm sorry that if I interrupted you before to, in order to do the spots, but um, you were talking about your friend Laura, whose place you took uh, when she was on maternity leave, and during that time you were instrumental in raising jazz awareness in the, in the, in the class over there and uh, helping to bring together this Franklin Monroe brass-free jazz ensemble could you tell us is there something else you want to yeah. talk about that? so the the fun part about that is sort of what happened after i left and laura returned um she was able to keep the group going throughout the end of that year and then starting the following school year she got approval to make a full jazz class and cool uh, they have actual brass players in there now and it's the real deal so. And I bet you they're sending some kids off to some to do some really interesting things with the background in jazz. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, how about where you teach now in the high school uh, in Crystal Lake? Mm -hmm. Do you get to do some jazz work with the kids? Um, well, I'm I'm only officially there as the drumline instructor. Okay. Um, I I'll t I talk with the director sometimes, and on on occasion I'll be like, I'm going to stop by your jazz class tomorrow and check on things and he's he's okay with that um but it's definitely not part of my official duties okay <laughs> all right so now you came back to illinois and you were able to secure more than one teaching job here since your return yeah um because i i got the crystal lake central gig and then my sister also took a maternity leave so friends getting pregnant has been very nice for me boosting your career yeah. immensely <laughs> Yeah, so I taught an entire year of general music in the Huntley school system. Oh, cool. For my sister. So you had time to, to take care of both schools. Yeah, because most of the marching band stuff was after school, and the with the general music thing, there really was nothing after school, so oh, perfect. it worked out well. Um, doesn't get any better than that. How did you eventually find Pots and Pans? Um, so that was, I started playing in the uh, Crystal Lake, Strikers drumline um, by suggestion of my parents because they had seen them in a parade or something. And Matt happened to be there and we knew each other from high school. And he's like, Hey, cool to see you again. I just started this steel band group and we need a drummer. And so he asked me if I wanted to come play kit. And I, I was straight up with him and it's like, Kit is not my forte, especially on this Calypso style that I am not very familiar with. He's like, well, we need a drummer, so come on out. So I did, and um, the first song we were doing, it, it was called uh, It's Carnival, and uh, it's a Desdra tune. And I uh, I listened to the track over and over again, and I was so ready for the first rehearsal that I was going to play because I knew that track really well. And I showed up, and it wasn't that. It was this arrangement they had done on <laughs> it. And it was much more traditional calypso, and then it modulated into like six other latin styles that i was totally unfamiliar with and i was just holding all over the kit but uh i stuck around playing kit for probably two months and and it was sort of an understanding with everybody it's like this isn't what you want to do in the group and this isn't what we want you to do in the group so we eventually found another drummer and i started learning bass pan and from there it was just sort of a struggle to figure out how can we get vibraphone in here because everybody agreed that I should play vibes with the group. And um, during that time, I fell in love with playing bass pan. I still do it with the group all the time because with the, the lead pan that I was playing for you guys, it's one 55-gallon oil drum, and it has all the notes on it. But I mentioned how as the notes get lower, they get bigger. So for a bass instrument, the notes are so big that you can only fit three notes on a single drum. You're kidding. So it takes six 55-gallon oil drums to make up the single instrument. Wow. So you really have to jump around and really dance while you play, which is a blast. you got to be exhausted by the time you're done with the show. Oh, yeah. Super sweaty. <laughs> but um, we went up to Montreal for the Montreal Steel Pan Festival in 2011, 2012. I'm not sure. Um and that's where we debuted Pan in our group, and we arranged a Joe Locke tune, who's one of my favorite vibes players. He's so, so good, talented, and musical. Um, and so we arranged a tune of his, the Lost Lenore, and we debuted it up at the Montreal Steel Pan Festival. And ever since, I've been playing vibes pretty regularly with the group. I see. Can you play another tune for us? Yeah, absolutely. 
So this will be another one on Vibes, since we're talking about it, and this is a classic Vibes piece called Bags Groove by another big-time Vibist, uh, Milt Jackson. Very cool. Fascinating. I'm sitting here watching him play this vibraphone, and he's got two two drumsticks in each hand, what look like drumsticks. But at the end of each drumstick is like a is like a ball, like a muffling ball. Yeah, it's uh, literally a. There's a ball inside, and it's wrapped with a special cord yarn. And yeah, I mean, if I were to hit it with wood, you get a totally different sound. Yeah. But with a uh, mallet. Sure, sure. Big difference. That's interesting. And then, But you, you also have two mallets in each hand. And sometimes, you, most of the time, you seem to be just using one of the mallets in each hand. But sometimes you're even using both mallets. Right. Um, so that's in, a... In the same hand. Gary Burton started this technique um so you, you have four mallets and it's because if, if that if i had a band playing with me when say the guitar player would take a solo i'd be using four the whole time to lay down chords and kind of give him some structure under what he solos but if i'm taking a solo and i want to play a line and i'm acting more like a horn player i'm going to use sort of two mallets to make a single line so that's one in each hand um and then Gary Burton kind of figured out this special way to hold the four mallets where it's like, if you hold them this way, then when you want to do two mallet stuff, the other two can get out of the way. And when you want to do four mallet stuff, it's real quick and easy to get all four ready to be in plain position. And it it lets you kind of mix and match between the two and the four mallet styles. So is that a relatively recent development? Or? Um In music terms, yes. But in our lives, not really. Mm-hmm. I mean, he... He started doing this, I don't know, 70s probably. Okay, all right. So, But the instrument itself has only been around for 100 years. Right. So that technique didn't even start for the first 
50 or 60 years that the instrument was around. Yeah, I mean, the so that tune that I just played, Bag's Groove, Milt Jackson was always a two mallet player. Okay. All right. It was really pretty. Very really cool. So now, besides uh, working with pots and pans, which I understand is like a full-time pursuit. Yeah, absolutely. But I understand that you're also uh, engaged in an academic pursuit at Roosevelt University? Yeah. Um, actually, this week marks the end of that. So uh, just this past Monday, I took my final juries and turned in all my paperwork. So within the next couple of weeks, I'll have a master's diploma. Congratulations. Thanks. Wonderful. So is that like a master of music? Or? It's a master of music in percussion performance. Okay. All right, cool. I love Roosevelt University. Yeah, it, it was a great place to be. They have great te- I went there for just one semester, but every teacher was just really excellent there. Yeah, I, I had no complaints. Very nice. Now, you mentioned the, another group with which you're involved called Totem. Yeah, Totem is a jazz quartet that uh, actually started with some other Roosevelt guys that I played with. Um, the way the jazz department works in Roosevelt is each semester you're placed in a different jazz combo based on a different style. Um, and I had played with some of these guys in other combos earlier and last year, but this year, first semester, I played in an ECM combo, and ECM was a German jazz record label, and their their whole thing was um, the, the most beautiful sound next to silence, and it's like, Everything they did, it was less of just the standard, like, bluesy stuff that I was just playing or this real dominant, heavy, 251-based uh, jazz stuff that was going on. And they started doing more intricate chord changes and just very lyrical songs. And it was just about making beautiful music, and it didn't necessarily matter about form or anything like that. So when we were playing in this group, we f- found out um, it was me a guitar player, Aaron Day, bass player, Aaron Zachary, and a drummer, Mitch Setacase. And the four of us were like, we really like this music, and we really like the four of us playing this music. So we started getting together outside of school and decided we need to make a group and we need to get get some shows. And we've played a lot at Jerry Sandwiches, and there's a place downtown, the uh, Nightcap Coffee Bar, that we played at last night, and we're going to start doing a regular monthly show there and we've done other things at like the union league club and we're playing at the um cigar society this month and so we're getting around cool are you all cigar smokers um not to the extent that i am but they will be that <laughs> night <laughs> great can, can you play another tune for us absolutely this will be another vibes piece it's called blue bossa This is something that Matt and I like to play with pots and pans all the time because it's just a fun, easy chart, easy to listen to.
very nice. Al Weissman in a nutshell. And today we're visiting with Anthony Houston of the group, of the percussion group Pats and Pans, and that was a tune called Blue Bassa by Kenny Dorham. Mm-hmm. Really nice. So now let's just suppose that uh, somebody out there wanted to retain the services of Pots and Pans. How would they go about doing that? Um, the easiest way is head over to potsandpans.org. That's pots with two T's, P-O-T-T-S, and is spelled out, pans, P-A-N-S, dot org, O-R-G. Um, and then you can find our professional group. We have a professional group and a community group, so the community group does any, uh, anything that uh, on a really tiny budget. If you want some pan and you just want pan and not looking for the professional level, then call out our community group and Matt or I will bring out either our high school group or our adult community group. But then for the professional level stuff, just click on professional group and you'll see our estimator and you can click on that and it gives you a ballpark idea of what it costs to get us out to you and um, sends us an email, lets us know that you're interested. Or you can just email us directly, which is always super easy and you can get matt potts his email is matt at potsandpans.org or you can get myself and my email is anthony at ajhvibes.com very cool what about some upcoming gigs anything on the horizon here uh yeah well this week is actually a big week for us um matt is off in west virginia doing a six-piece band show and that's tonight and also tonight, I'm off in St. Charles with the trio playing at the Chicago Pipe Show. Then tomorrow Where's night... Where's that going to be? Is that, uh, can pe- members of the public get in to oh, see this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Where's so it going to be? at uh, Pheasant Run Resort. Oh, oh we're nice. We're playing from uh, 6 to 10 o'clock. And um, we're going to be in the uh, smoking tent, and it's free to walk in. You just walk in, and um, you can sit back. They have a bar and food and obviously music. We'll be providing some pan music and... You can just hang around if you want, or there's going to be about eight cigar vendors if you want to partake. So, Very cool. Yeah. What about some other upcoming performances? Um, tomorrow, Friday, and then again on Monday, uh, Matt and Christina and myself. Uh, this is sort of like the core Pots and Pans trio. We're going to be playing some Mexican music at Pablo's in Crystal Lake from 7 to 10 each night. And then... Um, Going on from there, on the 6th, uh, Matt's playing at Woodstock High School, and I'm going to be up in Milwaukee playing at a private event. Um, and, uh, what, gosh, so many shows. But these are, are these like the ones that are available to the public that are posted on your website? Yeah. Uh, we actually post all everything on the website. So potsandpans.org should have everything up there. The most up-to-date is our Facebook. So it's facebook.com slash pots dot pans um because that's a lot easier to edit on our phones and as you can tell from what i was just talking about the next couple days matt and i are driving around and doing shows a lot so it's hard to get a chance to really sit down and do an hour of website updating but we can grab a quick phone update um so we keep the facebook up very regularly and the website gets a overhaul about every month very cool very very cool what about Totem? Uh, are they, do they have anything coming up? Uh, yeah, Totem is going to be playing at the uh, Smoking Lounge at Iwan Rees in downtown Chicago on May 13th. And that is, it's a $40 cover, and that comes with drinks and food and two cigars. Um, and then on May 16th, Totem will be playing at O'Hare Airport. Nice. They have a forum there? Um, a venue of some sort? I'm actually not entirely sure how that works. <laughs> uh, this is something new. Yeah, it's something new. Um, our guitar player, Aaron Day, he's done a couple shows there. So he he's the one who knows how to get inside and all that. Uh, I, I know they have some sort of space that people can play at. And they've hey, he's played there a couple times, and they finally allowed him to bring the whole group. So we're heading out. Very good. Um, we have about uh, four or five more minutes left. Do you think you could squeeze in one more number for yeah, us? Yeah, sure. Super. So I saved another Pantone for last. This is something that you guys might recognize.
Very cool. Thanks. So, like, do you have any plans for the future? Uh, what, where are you going to go with this thing? Um, so, yeah, uh, Matt and Christina and myself are just continuing with Pots and Pans. Um, it's almost entirely self-sufficient right now, but then we all have, we, we teach private lessons, and obviously Matt and I both have the drum lines that we run, and I have Totem, and Matt plays at the Rouse Center um, and not any of their musicals. So we have a couple other revenue sources, so we're doing the full-time musician thing already right now and it's working for us and we just hope to continue growing pots and pans and get things running a little better and a big part of that uh our two big goals is one the great lake steel pan festival we're coming up on year three and you can just go to steelpanfestival.com to get any more information about that where is that what does that occur um that is in crystal lake and it's the um, second weekend in April, so we just did that on April 12th, and it was a big success. Great. And the next thing is uh, the three of us are starting a new company called Culture, Arts, and Music to focus on our educational goals, because obviously Pots and Pans is very performance-based, and we love performing, but all of us at least have a little bit of desire to teach and move that on, so Culture, Arts, and Music is going to be the company to house all of our education stuff once it is... It's, it's formed. It is a company. We're just waiting on IRS approval for the uh, 501c3 title, and that so, will be off and running. So is this going to be like lessons and things of that nature? We'll do lessons and things of that nature. Um, our community bands will get absorbed into culture, arts, and music so that Pots and Pans at that point can just be a performance company. Something that we do right now, um, we do educational performances even where we go to libraries and things and in an hour we might play 15-20 minutes of music and we talk real in depth about the history of Pan and the making and the tuning and all that. And that will be something that culture, arts, and music will handle. Um, and then Pots and Pans will just be things for like our trio shows and this thing that Matt's doing in West Virginia and this thing that I'm doing tonight at the pipe show and stuff like that. All right, very nice. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention that maybe we haven't touched on yet? Um, if uh, people are interested, head over to Pots and Pans' Facebook, and we have a newsletter. And then I have a personal newsletter if you want more information about um, private shows I'm doing or shows with Totem. And you can sign up for that at ajhvibes.com. That's Vibes, V-I-B-E-S. Very cool. Thank you so much for appearing on In a Nutshell today. Hey, it was a blast. It was really cool. I loved it. And I'm sure our listeners loved it. It was really nice because you're you're so right on with the music. It's just really, really pleasant to listen to. Awesome. Okay, thanks again. And maybe we can have you sign sometime again in the future. That'd be great. All right. Take care. Good luck. And uh, we're going to take a break for about three minutes now. We will be back. <laughs> 